New business. New business, RSA's inquiries. Mr. Bean, did you want to? Thank you. Yes, I did uh, want to bring this up. Um, this came to light last week when I spoke uh, or was informed by the town manager that uh, uh, the town council had informed him of Selectman Wolsey uh, in a discussion with town council. And uh, I'm concerned uh, for a number of reasons uh, about their phone call, and I'm going to ask town council to discuss it. Um, one is to have simple telephone calls with uh, the town council and then to claim confidentiality on those uh, discussions when uh, the subject of the telephone call um, is not confidential in and of itself, and especially in light of the fact that uh, in March, Selectman Woolsey, under case number 218-2015-CV-00300, sued everybody on this board, uh, the town of Hampton, and uh, um, she prayed for the Honorable Court as follows in letter C, especially in these difficult budget times, that the petitioner, which would be Ms. Woolsey, be awarded her legal fees for having to file this petition. So um, I would ask um, Attorney Gerald to discuss um, that phone call and uh, the genesis of it. Uh, last Wednesday, I received a phone call from Selectman Woolsey asking me, uh, in general, what the powers and duties of the Board of Selectmen were, where those items were addressed in the uh, RSAs. And uh, <coughs> we then got into a, a brief discussion about uh, the uh, oath of office and what uh, RSA provisions govern that. Uh, I pointed her in the direction of the particular sections that generally discuss those items, and the uh, phone call concluded at that point. Um, I drew this to the attention of the manager uh, because, uh, the, given the, uh, I wasn't sure what the what the concerns, the, if there were particular concerns, but the manager deals with uh, all of you and. Uh, and uh, relations among the selectmen, and I wasn't quite sure where this might be coming from, so I drew that to his attention. Uh, the next day, I w it was he, he recommended to me that when I get inquiries of this type, uh, calling for most of the time, as you know, the inquiries that I'm to answer, legal inquiries, come from this meeting. Uh, he recommended that when I get inquiries like that, that I should uh, send an email to all the board because. The confidentiality that comes from discussions with me extends to the entire board that I should uh, share what I shared with uh, Ms. Wolsey. Okay. And that was done. And thank you. I've got for, further follow on, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, chapter 41, Choice and Duties of Town Officers, 41 8, that the uh, uh, town council refers to. At every town at the annual meeting, she'll choose by ballot. One selectman to hold office for three years. The selectman shall manage the prudential affairs of the town and perform the duties by law prescribed. Uh, the challenging part of that uh, um, chapter, of course, is a majority of the selectmen shall be competent in all cases. Uh, that is 41.8. Uh, when I was informed by the town manager of this discussion, uh, you emailed uh, the board on uh, 4.23. And number two, uh, you allude to a discussion with Ms. Woolsey, which has no confidentiality, as to which RSA governs the oath of office and removal for violation of same. Please see RSA 42 colon 1 and 42 uh, colon 1 alpha 1 and 2. What is the genesis uh, of that specific response uh, from counsel to Ms. Woolsey? Please, sir. Uh, that uh, came in the course of discussion of the provisions of uh, oath of office and what what uh, sections uh, govern that and what could be done for a violation of oath of office. Thank you very much. And I wanted to shed light on that. This uh, this inquiry has no confidentiality. Uh, we are in a limited uh, budget. Uh, there are uh, requests that we'll address later on tonight by the budget chair. Uh, for uh, expenditures out of the legal budget. And I want to make sure that uh, when we have good people that are, are in the town that come tonight and they know with uh, uh, all the demands uh, that are placed on municipal services, we heard tonight about 
snow removal. We're hearing about deficits. We hear about people that are reducing the demand for services, and it appears that uh, whether it's a court action last month and using the town clerk to notarize that information by Ms. Wilsey, or to um, foist unnecessary work demands about uh, harebrained schemes, uh, that we feel that we can uh, take the town council's time as elected leaders in, I think, an inappropriate manner. And that's what I'd like to share with you tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. May I respond? Please. Thank you. I did not expect any confidentiality from council. I simply asked him if I'm not to call him, uh, then that's fine. I have no problem with that. However, at the start of my remarks, I caution you and the viewing audience that while my comments may be uncomfortable to some, the statutes require that any criticism of an elected official or officials must take place in public. What I have to say here tonight cannot be said <clears throat> behind closed doors. Last year we performed our duties with at least a veneer of cooperation. On Monday, March 16th, at the reorganization of this board, you chose to disrespect me and my service to this community by refusing to allow me to serve as chair. That decision was made behind my back even before we sat down in public to take a vote. On Tuesday, March 17th, as the selectman representative to the Budget Committee, I reported to their regular monthly meeting. After serious consideration on Wednesday morning, March 18th, I called alternate selectman representative Bridle and told him that I refuse to represent this board because I no longer trust my colleagues and will not disrespect the Budget Committee by working with them under false pretenses. After a contentious year of poor relations with that committee, I had offered to serve as your representative, relying on my many years of service as a member at large, chairman, and select man representative. I hoped to bring a measure of cooperation so that the committee would be better prepared to conduct 2016 budget deliberations this fall. At that March 17th meeting of the Budget Committee, I participated in discussions, answered questions, and listed inquiries from the members that I promised to follow up. I emailed Chairman Latimer the following day with the best responses that I could provide. While at that meeting, I suggested, since we are starting a very important reval year, that the Budget Committee members could profit by starting their work sessions in April with a presentation by Assessing Officer Ed Tinker. I had checked with Mr. Tinker before making that suggestion to see whether he would be open to such a presentation, and with his usual obliging spirit, he agreed. Chairman Latimer followed up with him a few days after the March meeting, and they settled on an appropriate format. I informed all of you that I made that suggestion. It seemed a non-controversial way to start the new budget year. On Tuesday, April 21st, I watched the telecast of the regular month budget committee monthly meeting and was appalled by the arrogant remarks made by Selectman Representative Bean. After witnessing his comments and hasty departure from that meeting, leaving a flabbergasted group of elected officials in his wake, I want to give you the following considerations. Number one, according to Mr. Bean's statement of record on April 21st, he and Chairman Griffin made a decision that day to direct Mr. Welch to inform Mr. Tinker that the board would not allow him to make his scheduled appearance before the Budget Committee that evening. Number two, I was never consulted by either of them before this unlawful action. Number three, I have no idea whether Mr. Bridle, the alternate, and or Mr. Waddell were consulted. Number four, the assessing officer works in lieu of the Board of Selectmen, and no town manager has any authority over him. This is an unacceptable position in which to place both the manager and the assessor. Number five, two members of this or any other board have no authority to act outside the jurisdiction of the five members. Number six, the chairman of the budget committee was never notified in advance that Mr. Tinker had been forbidden to attend the April 21st meeting. Number seven, Mr. Bean in his unforgivingly insulting remarks to the budget committee claimed that he consulted with Chairman Griffin and they ordered Mr. Tinker to not attend. He ranted about the 2015 budget, which is a dead issue saying from now on he orders that all requests from the Budget Committee go through him and he will only work with Chairman Latimer and no members of the Budget Committee have a right to question department heads, etc. 
Chairman Latimer had told her committee members that all requests for information related to the budget must go through her, and she has a right to stipulate that for the sake of orderliness. But all members of any committee have rights as residents and taxpayers and can ask any questions of anyone in government at any time. I refer to the Budget Committee Statute, RSA 32, quoting from the RSA 3216 Roman 2. To confer with the governing body or bodies and with other officers, department heads, and other officials relative to estimated costs, revenues anticipated, and services performed to the extent deemed necessary by the Budget Committee. It shall be the duty of all such officers and other persons to purchase, pr furnish such pertinent information to the Budget Committee." End quote. A selectman representative is meant to be a facilitator, not a dictator. I have more experience serving with and on the Municipal Budget Committee than any of you, all of you, sitting here. I'm appalled at the disrespect shown to the committee, which sat in stunned silence after outrageous statements by Selectman Bean and his cowardly retreat at the conclusion of his remarks. It is illegal for Selectman Bean and or Selectman Griffin to make such a decision on his or their own without concurrence from this board and the manager was drawn in as party, party to this conspiracy against the greatest, greater interests of the board. I am furious at the embarrassment inflicted on the most competent, outstanding assessing officer that I have known since I entered public office in 1978. Mr. Tinker was told by the manager at the explicit direction of Mr. Bean that the board ordered him to not attend that night's budget meeting, which is an outright lie. The mission of any and all elected officials is first and foremost to serve the best interests of the public. Personalities have no place in public office. This is not a men's club. It is impossible to achieve any lasting benefits to a community when members of any board sneak around behind the backs of other duly elected officials. And you are the board that rejected my suggestion that we have a joint public meeting with the planning board to iron out areas of concern. You said we aren't supposed to tell other elected officials what to do. Preposterous. I am one-fifth of this board, and I refuse to put up with sneaking, disrespectful, illegal conduct. How am I to fulfill my oath to the taxpayers of Hampton? Did the public vote for conduct like this? We cannot continue to sanction this behavior and accept to accomplish anything this year. And quite frankly, I intend to call for a conference with town council before next week's meeting because I think Mr. Bean should step down as a representative of this board. I, would I like have no idea what Mr. Griffin's involvement, if any, may have been. And I'm going to, because I... I, I no comments from the audience, please. Um, I will, because I've been accused, I will uh, say that when Mr. Bean stopped to see me, the what he asked me was... Uh, that we have made a decision as a board that all items go through the representative, which, Mrs. Wolseley, you were the representative, and you stepped down. I was under the impression because you didn't get along with Mrs. Latimer when she was there. Oh, I told Mr. Bryles well, Mrs. Latimer told me the same thing. No, so, I told Mr. Well, Mrs. Wolseley, please let me have my say. I was under the impression that you weren't getting along there, and that's why you left the, uh, no. the planning board. Well, that's what it appeared at the, the budget committee. Not well, true. you did come and you gave up your place. You did not have to. Because I said I didn't I'm want sorry, to represent Mrs. you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Wolseley. Let me have I my didn't want talk. To represent Let you. me have my time to say something. Sneaky. You are the one that that, that asked not to be on the budget committee. So that's when Mr. Bean took yeah. over that position. Now, okay. am I, are you asking now to be back on the Budget Committee? What I'm saying to you, because you've asked me the question, number one, I said I refused to represent a board that went behind my back. And number no one two, went behind your yes, back, you Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, you did. No, and okay, that, please. No, you wait till let, let me finish my conversation. No, you asked me a question. Mrs. Stop Wolseley, banging the please. damn gavel. You asked Mrs. me a question, Mrs. Wolseley, and I'm going to please. answer it. Let me I'm have, gonna I'm going to finish my conversation. No, Mr. Well, none of us, as a board, ever, 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 the, the appointment with you Mr. Are Tinker, out of line, I'm Mrs. not out Wilson. of line. Mr. Tinker was booked on by the chairman of the budget committee in right after the March meeting. 
Mrs. He, Wolseley, he agreed, you are not agreed. the budget and committee on, person. You asked to be relieved from I'm it, and that's why you were. I'm a member of this confounded board, and okay. don't tell me Mr. You Bean asked and to be Mr. Griffin not to be. told the assessing officer to Mrs. not Wolseley, go. Mrs. Wolseley, please don't speak for me. Please do not Mr. speak Bean for me. Mr. Bean spoke for you. Mrs. Wolseley, he said you Mr. Asked Mr. Griffin to not and be I. on the budget committee. That's irrelevant at okay. this point in time. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. If you wanted to be there, you could have been there. You asked not to. Please. Let, let me have know, let me have my say. If you want to talk again, you can have a follow-up. The budget agenda set up, predicated on the assessing officer showing the manager Mrs. has Wolfley, no authority. You are out of line. Authority. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I am here to. I want to have my. Unwind. You have made some accusations, you, and I yes, want to say. Yes, I have. Okay, what I think did you you're strongly and Mr. Bean do? Uh, against Mrs. the interests of this board. Nobody did anything. Yes, Just you did. like no, Mrs. Wolseley, please. You will have your chance to talk. When? When? After you let someone else have their chance to talk, please stop it. You asked me a question. Mrs. Wolseley, I'm not asking you a question. If you're you want to. You're making misstatements. May, may I make a comment? No, well, in one moment. I mean, okay. uh, no, Jim? we agreed at this board to let things go through the representative, just like you were the representative the last time. Um, as I want to address about the, uh, how we make, in the past, whenever anybody, want, you know, when there is an election, people are allowed to talk one-on-one. -on -one. That's all that happened this year, just like every other year that I've been here. If you want to be the, uh, someone to nominate you, that was up to you to go ahead ahead of time and make sure someone was going to nominate you. I can't imagine we're how you thought to, someone on this board would nominate you. We're not supposed to be talking behind closed doors. One on, no, there People are no closed doors. Mrs. Wolsey, you election. will have your chance to talk. Well, you, Please, Mrs. Wolsey, this is election. my time to talk. Well, You're I'll out of you line. And then Mr. Uh, Waddell is going to talk next. All you right. will have your chance to talk, Mr. Waddell. Yeah, I would just like to say that, you know, I was at a function the other night, and one of the restaurant owners in town was talking to me, and he's not concerned with who's chairman, and he's not concerned with uh, if Mr. Bean said something at the budget committee. He's concerned about the sewer line going to his restaurant. People on Exeter Road are concerned about Exeter Road. Now, this, this board used to be, when I used to go to breakfast on Tuesday mornings, it used to be, did you see the foolishness that went on with the select board last night? People would be talking about it. Are we going to fall back into that? The fact that you were not elected chairperson, it was no conspiracy. It was none. Uh, nobody came to me and said that I was going to make an issue out of it and vote for somebody. Nobody did that. It was, it's been done before the tradition wasn't followed, and I think that we should just let that die out and go away because the, the public is not interested in that. They're interested in getting the work of the town done. As the thing about representatives, we did talk on this board. We did have a discussion and said that we, because we talked about Rick on the planning board when he was there, that we wanted all of the correspondence to go through the representative of the planning board, or of the, uh, the different boards the selectman's representative. So that was something that was discussed. It, that was not something that was done in the background. And I think, I think we should get down to working on the business. I mean, th th this went on two years ago, removing people from the board, removing people from that. It was foolishness then. It, people laughed about it in town at that point. People laugh about it now. Let's get down to the business that's appropriate for the board. And let's deal with that and not deal with this foolishness. Jim, let okay, me, the, no, Mrs. Wolseley, I will recognize you when it is your turn to talk. Well, it's my turn to talk now. Okay. It's went around, and I would like to say also that I feel that this is a tremendous waste of time. Uh, you spend a lot of time deciding who is going to need to be removed from the board, even though they may have gotten the most votes of anybody. You would like them to be removed. We need to respect what the voters are saying. And that's what I feel, too. I feel that uh, I basically am not, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not involved in this at all. And, but I am involved because I am a member of this board. And, I mean, it's, it's, every time I come here, it's, it's, 
there's somebody you're sneaking around trying to uh, control things, control the board, or try to look at ways to uh, offend the voting public because you don't agree with who they selected. I have a strong problem with that. Now it's your time to talk, Mrs. Wilson. Okay. Jim, I made the, I had the discussion while I was still the representative <clears throat> of this board in March with the chairman of the budget committee regarding having the assessing officer go in and talk to them this year, like he did last year, but on the reval. Because you have to admit that the relations with the budget committee were not good last year. And I said to all of you, I will volunteer to take on the position of budget committee representative this year to try to calm things down. And the chairman of the budget committee was very receptive to having Mr. Tinker go into the April meeting. She went in and talked to him. They sorted it out. He was all set. He was booked on. He was on their agenda, if I recall <coughs> correctly. And at the last minute, to have a member of this board go into the manager and the, the member of that board being Mr. Bean said you, he consulted with you and the two of you determined that the manager should tell Mr. Tinker not to show up at that meeting April 21st. That was set in, it was agreed to, the chairman of the budget committee talked to Mr. Tinker he was all set to go. That was set up for the meeting. That has nothing to do with any decisions that anybody made funneling anything through anyone. That was predetermined. He, the, he was ready to go. The budget committee was ready to hear him. And Mr. Bean, spouting your name, and he did it again at the budget meeting, said that you two, you two, and you're only two members of the board, told the manager to tell the assessing officer not to show up. That is outrageous. I say that is illegal. I say you have no right to do that as two members of this board. I'm saying that it didn't happen. Mr. Mr. Oh, Chairman, may I, okay. may I, Mr. Chairman, oh, may I have the floor, please? Mr. Mr. Welch, Mr. Bean. Uh, may I please have you confirm that you did not tell the tax assessor that he was not going to attend the meeting? That's correct. Well, I was Thank you. There. Pardon me, I've got the floor, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Ms. 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 Wolsey has asserted at least three times that mm -hmm. you told the tax assessor not to go to the meeting. Is that incorrect? I believe that's incorrect. That sir. is incorrect. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're talking he simply. told me that he had been requested. We, 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 we're talking here oh. simply, may I, a point of order. Mrs. Wolsey, yeah, Madam please Wilson, stop please. interrupting and let other people talk. Who please let other people have the floor. No one can talk when you're around. That's the problem oh. here tonight. Well, Mr. Mr. Bean. Mr. Chairman, we're, we're, we're simply talking about formal lines of communication that enhances the types of issue that Selectman Waddell is talking about in execution uh, of uh, the most important company in town, the most important corporation. We have first responders. We have uh, police, fire, public works. We have deteriorating uh, structure, uh, infrastructure. We've got a budget committee that the 11th hour that went through the entire process uh, cut $700,000 uh, without notification to the Board of Selectmen, without notification. Uh, department head members never consulted with any of them. And it, it's time to get in line with what the voters have done in, at, the, at the polls, and they have reduced that board. It's going to be a new input. Uh, and Mrs. Woolsey's assertions of you know, she, she and two other selectmen removed me from the chairperson spot. Those two people were voted off the island to vote with her. Elections will be held again. Ms. Woolsey, if she can't achieve success at the polls, uh, wants to hire the town attorney, have us pay for it, and impose her royal dictatorship on the town. Uh, and it's just not consistent with reality. Her assertions about Mr. Welch tonight are not consistent with the truth. We have talked about this. Is Selectman Waddell? Is Selectman Wood? Bridal has told you. She talks about her ability as a former representative to the Budget Committee to impose a will on how I, working as your representative in the Board's representative, is going to conduct my time. And that's simply fallacy. It's, it's, it's nonsense. Mrs. Woolsey condemned Mr. Moore several years ago when he left this Board, forced off the Board by her actions and two other selectmen. She said she didn't take her toys and go home. Well, she did that with the Budget Committee, and she quit. 
She quit one of the most important liaison committees in this town because the board didn't grant her a chairmanship. Now she's out to seek more legal uh, effort. She wants to intimidate people. And if you're a department head in this town and you listen to this woman and you see how she treats elected officials, you have to wonder if you're the Esquire. You have to wonder if you're a department head. Who's next? And it's a climate of fear. It's a climate of pernicious, disputatious, pugnacious, egregious malice. And it will never end until she no longer sits at this board. Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell? Uh, you know, I made my Ooh. statement that we're, that we're dealing with foolishness. Well, and, and I just want to say that I have this after the original um, uh, time of uh, when the, the initial, the first meeting of the Budget Committee, Mrs. Latimer, the chairman, called me up just one on one and she uh, instructed me that uh, she did run into you going into Ed Tinker's office and she strongly uh, said to you that that's her job, not yours. Yes. And I, she led me to believe uh, that before anything happened to <coughs> this board, I, that I, that's why I thought you were unhappy and when you agreed, you quit the board. That's why I thought you quit it, because you weren't getting your way there. And that's what she told me. She told me that you had a problem at the board uh, not being in charge there. That's how she felt. She felt threatened by you also. I don't feel threatened by you, but in all 11 years I've been here, I've never had this problem with somebody going around trying to intimidate people, and I find it to be a problem. It's a problem for me. You have the floor. Mr. Mrs. Latimer can make her own commentary. I'm not going to go. Well, you talk about one-on-one. -on -one. But. Yeah. Conversation. And she called me, yeah. and that's what she told that's me. That's fine. Then you can sort that out with her, and she can make her own public statement. I want to know why Mr. Tinker, who was scheduled and on the agenda for the April 21st Budget Committee meeting, I want to know why he did not show up, and that is not like Mr. Tinker. Number two, if you think the spectacle you made at that budget committee meeting on April 21st was going to bring good relations and productive relations with the budget committee, I beg to differ. Anybody who's seen that is, is appalled. Appalled. And I think you have a hell of a nerve going behind our backs one-on-one -on -one, telling the assessing officer what to do. Be you and Mr. Griffin. And you stated that. You stated that in public at the budget meeting, and you stated it in public. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. There's no going behind backs here. It's professional yes, leadership. Not but professional. You, you, you can listen to Ms. Woolsey all night long. You think your appearance was you professional can. at the budget committee? Mrs. Woolsey, are you suggesting that you want to be the uh, budget committee no. rep? I you am, are, I, I, we, maybe we can open that discussion when Mr. Bridal comes back. I am saying that I will be delighted to represent the Budget Committee. I love working with the Budget Committee, but no, I am not going to talk to Budget Committee members with a bunch of selectmen sneaking around behind my back, forbidding the assessing officer to Don't go Don't shake and your meet finger at me, please. Well, you banged your gavel at me. That's my job. Oh, thank you. That's good to know. I work without Okay. A gavel. Any other comments, Mr. Waddell? I've seen this, I've heard this song. It wasn't popular before. It shouldn't be popular again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to be moving on. Good. Closing comments? Closing comments, yeah. I, I, I don't want to beat a, a dead horse, but I just want to say that I respect Selectman Wolseley. I respect her opinion. I think she has a lot to offer to this board. I think we got off to a bad start. I would like to see us work through this problem and come to a, a consensus where we're working cooperatively together. I, 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 people did not go behind her back, did not, did, she, has, you have a dis, she has a difference of opinion on what happened. But I think we, we have a year to go here together. I think we can work through this. I think we can work cooperatively. I think we respected each other last year. I respect her opinion. You have, you have a history in, in uh, Hampton. You know what's going on. And I'd, just from my point of view, totally, I would like to see us move forward and not move backwards. I also would like to see us move forward. 
and I respect the uh, the voters. The voters voted for Mrs. Wolseley. That's why she's here, and we need to try to work together, and I'm all for it. Mrs. Wolseley. I would just like to ask you one question, Mr. Waddell, and I appreciate your remarks. Did you know that Mr. Bean was saying that he and Mr. Griffin took that action? Were you consulted? I, w I was not consulted, no. Thank you. I, mean, I, I, but, but, but I appreciate it's your It's not remarks. to say that anyone took no. any action. Yeah. <laughs> no, this was in the name of the board, and I just no, wanted to No, ask that, you. that was a... Well, My closing comments, yeah. Mr. Chairman, would be that you didn't hear a word you said, Jim. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. I'm sorry. Thank you.